Welcome! This worship video is for the sixth Sunday in Easter. Uh, we are actually going to have some special music uh, today. We'll have two songs uh, from the National Lutheran Choir uh, from their virtual gathering a few weeks ago. So I invite you to sing along or simply listen to the amazing blending of voices. And check out their YouTube channel uh, for many other songs and clips from past concerts. We begin with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We just have one reading this morning, uh, since we have the two pieces of music. So our gospel reading today is from John 14, verses 1 through 21. 
Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, so you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. It's always strange how the familiar seems odd when placed out of context right? Like, I've lived in a lot of different places in my life, and so it feels like I have a lot of different worlds. So whenever someone from one world somehow shows up in another, it takes me back, and I need a second to adjust. Uh, one time, my husband, who wasn't my husband yet, visited me at college. Now, since home was a thousand miles away, and I hadn't had anyone except my family visit me there, I kept staring at him to make sure he was really there. I knew him well, but he felt out of place until I finally adjusted and accepted him in this new context. The Gospel reading for today feels similar. I know we get this as a lectionary text every three years, uh, but more often we hear it at funerals. We hear the words about Jesus preparing a place for us, and we think heaven. And indeed, it is a beautiful text for that occasion. But it's easy to think that this is only a funeral text, that it doesn't belong outside of that context. So when we hear it, like on a Sunday morning, it feels strange, and it can take a while before we adjust and we understand it in a new way. As always, one of the most important parts of understanding any story in the Bible is to know what's happening in the larger context. Chapter 14 is part of what we call the farewell discourse. It's Jesus saying goodbye to the disciples. It's actually three chapters long. Jesus talks for three straight chapters, and this is just the start of it. It's 14 through 17. And all of this happens right after the foot washing, after Judas leaves, after the prediction of Peter denying Jesus. Things aren't perfect in the larger context of the story right now. It's kind of like the family drama dinner party that somebody storms out of, right? We've all seen that scene on television. Maybe we've ever even experienced it. So this big blow-up happens, and then Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
He talks about what it means that he's leaving and what's going to happen next. Jesus says that in his house, in his father's house, there are many dwelling places. So I don't know about you, but I usually picture like this really big mansion, right? Just infinite amount of rooms. Uh, maybe you picture that we all get our own house, and so it's just row after row of picket fences. But the Greek word here is meno, which means abide or stay or remain. So in God's house, there are many places to remain, for God to remain with us and us with God. So Jesus isn't going off to prepare a place for us to live that's different than where we live now. Jesus is preparing a way for God to remain with us. This is a God that's always wanted to abide with us, to live among us. That's why God showed up as Jesus in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. The whole story of the Bible is just God coming near to us over and over again. Jesus says that to know him is to fully understand God. He says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? So, in our text today, even though Jesus is leaving, we're never alone. In fact, not only do we hear about God the Father and God the Son, we learn about God the Spirit. So another quick Greek lesson. Jesus says he'll send the Advocate. Now the Greek word is parakaleo. Para, meaning alongside, and kaleo, meaning to call. So it literally means to call alongside. So the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the advocate, is the one who is called alongside us. We don't see Jesus, right? We don't have him walking around telling us what to do. That was a very brief period of time. But God speaks to us still through the Word, through the Spirit. Jesus spends three whole chapters talking to the disciples because he knows that things are about to look really different. He was going to leave. He is finishing this part of the ministry of God, and the disciples are going to have to figure out what it meant to live in this new world. They didn't know it yet, but they were not going to know what to do next. They were going to be lost, not feel like they knew the way. My peace I leave with you, Jesus says. You will have the one who walks alongside. We don't know what to do in our world right now. We're opening back up, but we still can't worship together. We still worry as the peak of infection hasn't even happened in our area yet. We don't know what things will look like next week or next month and definitely not next year, but we have one who walks alongside us. This isn't just a text about going to heaven. This is also about what we have going for us here and now. Our text ends with Jesus telling us, In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commands and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. God was fully revealed in Jesus, and Jesus has sent the Spirit, 
and we are part of all of it. We know God because Jesus has given us his peace. We know God because we know the love that God has for us. We share in that love. We listen to the Spirit and we proclaim the same good news that was once proclaimed to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled, for you have a dwelling place prepared for you, now and forever. Amen. My life was on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. I invite you to join me in a brief time of prayers of intercession. If you feel so moved, the response to each petition will be, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God. You have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church, as your followers, to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing, knowing that God is with you, alongside you, always. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia.